Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. What I'd like to talk about this time is high context versus low context cultures. Now when we talk about context, we're really talking about one of the dimensions of culture as uh, we measure it internationally. And one way to really understand context is through examining a couple of different perspectives uh, through association and through interaction. And as you can see here, here are lists of different characteristics that we can evaluate culture on using these two perspectives. So let's first examine high versus low context by association. Uh, starting with relationships. Um, the high context culture is going to look at relationships as something that need to be uh, taken cautiously because you want to build up trust and there is no rush in doing that. You want to make sure that you get it right. Um, you want the relationship to be stable. And so from their perspective, um, it's not something that you just rush into. Um, when it comes to relationships in a high context culture, one distinguishes uh, between people who are inside uh, or outside of your own circle. Um, it's a little bit different for low context people. Um, relationships uh, really begin and end quickly. Um, people tend to meet people, build relationships. They don't last uh, into perpetuity. They're not meant to necessarily. Uh, and so they come and they go. Um, one particular circle of interaction and people uh, could have many people versus uh, a smaller number for high context people who are going to be more careful about who is in that inner circle and so forth. You're not going to be quite as much focusing, focusing on your in-group uh, versus the out-group. So the circle's boundary of who is in and who is not um, is not clear for low context people. So similarly, uh, we find differences like we do in relationships with how we get things done. Um, again, by association, high context people uh, tend to get things done depending on the relationships they build and how strong those relationships are. They focus on their group processes and getting along with people and maintaining a status quo and trying to get as much agreement as possible. This is different from how people in low context cultures tend to behave when it comes to getting things done. Uh, they like to follow procedures. They like to have rules and regulations uh, and they like to have goals that they can strive for. So again, um, association is a great way to compare these different factors and really become uh, gain some understanding of the high versus low context. Um, we also want to look at identity. For the high context person, your identity is really rooted in the groups that you're a member of, your most important in-groups. So that is your family, and that is your work, and it is your country possibly or region and it is certainly your culture in general uh, and that identity is a shared identity and it's perceived that way uh, for people who are low context and have low context culture their identity is much more rooted in themselves and their own accomplishments and so forth so it's not as much about the group, even though the group and the particular significant in-groups are very important. Um, your personal identity is much more uh, rooted in the things that you've accomplished in your life. Now, when we look at social structure uh, through the lens of association and make comparisons, we see that uh, when it comes to high context, uh, high context cultures that uh, social structure and authority are very centralized. Uh, there is a distinct hierarchy that exists quite often. Um, and we find that responsibility is traditionally concentrated at the top and that is considered the normal way to do things. The person at the top, of course, works for the good of the group. And it's certainly assumed by the rest of uh, the population that that is the intent uh, of the person at the top. But when it comes to low context people and social structures and so forth, 
we see that things are much more decentralized, that responsibility is spread for further uh, to lower levels of society and uh, at work and in business and so forth. And decision making is not necessarily concentrated at the top. There tend to be differences in organizations that are more low context, for instance, uh, whether they centralize or decentralize. And it is a reflection of uh, a cultural orientation of higher low context. Now let's take the same idea uh, of using a lens to give us some insight here and look at interaction and go through these similar characteristics. Um, we could look at, uh, or at least these remaining characteristics, we look at uh, nonverbal communication. So that's an interaction. And uh, when it comes to high context people, um, the use of nonverbal elements to communicate and get the message clear is paramount. And so here uh, we find that voice tone, facial expression, gestures, eye movement, uh, all carry significant parts of a conversation. And you need to pay attention to those uh, cues and so forth if you really want to understand the message coming from a person in, from a high context society or culture. Low context people are different. They have very low use of these nonverbal elements and indeed they often miss these nonverbal cues when they're communicating with high context people. Um, messages for low context people is, uh, are more often carried by words and explicit written instructions rather than nonverbal cues and other nonverbal means of communicating. Now there are some real differences here as well between high and low context when we look at verbal communication. For high context people, the verbal messages tend to be implicit. In other words, the meaning is implied. And the thinking is that, well, you're going to certainly know what I mean and what I'm thinking through the use of uh, all the uh, contextual factors that exist in the situation. And that's exactly one thing to really focus on between low and high context people. It's much more about the situation for low context, uh, for high context people. The people involved are much more important and significant in just who they are. Um, and the nonverbal elements are so much more important to high context people. So the verbal message is much often uh, implied and much more important that way uh, than words are. The verbal message, therefore, we would say is indirect. They, they tend to talk around the point and embellish the point. Um, to, and how much of that will happen depends on whether or not they're thinking that you're getting the message. Um, communication in this sort of uh, fashion is really seen as an art form and it's a way of engaging someone. This is quite different from the uh, approach of people from low context cultures. The verbal messages generally are very explicit. Uh, the verbal message is direct. Things are spelled out directly and exactly by the person. Um, there's not often too much miscommunication when people are direct and explicit. And so for low context individuals, the context is uh, so much less important than the words that they have to tell you. And the communication itself is perceived as a way of just exchanging information and exchanging ideas and opinions uh, rather than necessarily uh, using a nuanced sort of approach. Now, when it comes to disagreement, um, there are differences here that we can really point to between high and low context persons. Uh, for high context people, quite often, if there's a disagreement, then it becomes quite personal. Um, and so um, high context people tend to be very sensitive to conflict and in particular with people uh, who are in their in groups, their close in groups. Uh, and so they're sensitive to uh, conflict with those sorts of people. And uh, quite often uh, they will react to another person's uh, uh, nonverbal communication. It becomes quite personal because People enter your in-group in these important circles because you have built trust 
slowly over time and these relationships are considered and accepted as very stable. So when disagreement happens, it tends to become personal. Now, when we look at how low context people uh, react to disagreement, it's quite often depersonalized. Um, low context people might often uh, withdraw from the conflict. They'll just say, okay, I'm done with it. I'm not going to deal with it. And they will have no resolution. They've withdrawn and they get on with the task, whatever that might be. Um, the focus in when there is disagreement from low context people is always going to be on a rational solution, not a personal one necessarily, although personal solutions are going to happen uh, depending on personalities. Um, but one can be very explicit uh, in a low context sort of environment about another person's uh, bothersome behavior. And low context people are not shy about generally expressing how they feel about those sorts of things. Now, having said all of this about high versus low context culture, uh, we do want to remember that culture, any culture is a continuum of behavior with extremes at both ends and most people falling in the middle somewhere. So it is always very easy to find examples that are not true of these generalities. And uh, we have to consider that when we talk about culture, even through these different characteristics and dimensions, that we are talking about tendencies and generalities, and that we're always going to find some real world um, examples that aren't true, that uh, say the opposite about these things. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about this time. I'll talk to you again soon.